Hi everyone, welcome to August Books. I have five books, all very different. Two are scriptures that I'll put at the end, Christian books. So let's jump in. The first one is by Rupa Septis, and I've read quite a few of her books that I highly, highly, highly recommend. This one is not one that I would count among my favorites or her best, but her writing is so good, and it always captures something of history that I learned something about. So this one was out of the easy, and it's set in 1950s New Orleans in the French Quarter. It is a 17-year-old girl, Josie, whose mother is a prostitute, and it's very much about the brothel and the women in the house, including her mother and the woman who runs it. Josie is somebody who is not going to be a prostitute. She is hoping to go to school. She has bigger dreams. And a lot of things unfold in this book. So many things that are beyond her control that she's trying to fix and trying to deal with. You feel very sorry for this poor girl who definitely got the short end of the stick. And yet, in a weird way, as much as this goes into all of the brothel things, it's kind of wholesome. And she's very streetwise, but she's very sweet as well. I really did enjoy it. Like I said, it's not my favorite of Rupta's books, but it is really good. Her writing is phenomenal. So I'll put some other books below of hers that I absolutely, absolutely loved. This next one, some of you may have read this when you were younger. I wasn't raised in this country, so the books that I was exposed to were very different than the ones that you're all familiar with. This is one that probably a huge amount of you have read and read to your children and now your grandchildren. And if you haven't, I recommend it. It's called From the Mixed Up Files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler. And it's about a little girl and her family in upstate New York and they're gonna, the little girl Claudia decides to run away from home. She's not sure why she was upset about something. It's kind of foggy, but she's a planner. She's decided she's gonna run away from home and she's gonna make it happen. And she decides to take the youngest brother, James, because he's a little miser with his money and she knows that he'll have some finances to help fund their trip. It is so cute and so wholesome and so delightful. It just, it's really sweet. If you have not read this to your children or grandchildren, I highly recommend it. They do run away. They hide out in the Metropolitan Museum. They get swept up in this little mystery. And it's just, it's funny, it's cute, it's charming. I just loved it. And I think one of you recommended it to me. And I'm so sorry, I don't remember who. I've had it on my Kindle for a while. So thank you, whoever recommended it. Definitely would recommend that. Such a cute book. This next one was called Friends Like These by Kimberly McCrate, and it's not a wholesome sweet book. It's very dysfunctional. Uh, it's about five friends who go off to upstate New York on the premise of it being a bachelor party for one of their friends. It's actually a drug intervention for one of their friends who has problems with drugs. It flashes back to something that happened with all of them in college and you know that it wasn't good, and you don't know a whole lot of details. You think there was a death, but it unfolds. And they all have secrets. They all have a lot of baggage. They all have a lot of dysfunction, but they are all determined to protect the group's secrets and to help all of their friends. And there's also a police officer in there, and you find out her history, and she's going for police chief, and what's going on with that. I really enjoyed, it's a fluffy, fast-paced thriller, like you could get probably get through this in a weekend. It's just one of those really fun-paced thrillers that I really enjoyed. It's nothing deep, it's nothing earth-shattering, it's... I saw, I figured I knew what was going on about three quarters of the way through, but I, even then, everything that they showed you at the very end, I did not know. And it just was one of those whodunit, thriller, mysteries, lots of dysfunction, and lots of twists and turns. 
I really enjoyed it. So these last two are Christian books. The first one is Habakkuk. This was a series that I listened to through the app Revive Our Hearts. You can download the app for free and listen to it. It's also on their website and I'll link it below. Habakkuk is a little book near the end of the Old Testament and it's three chapters. And I've read it many times. And I never got out of it what I got out of it during this series. Nancy, Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth is the one who narrates and talks about this. She takes these three chapters and breaks it down verse by verse. I think it, the whole series was half hour audio sections of 24 of them, I think. So very easy for me to listen to while I'm getting ready in the morning and then take my phone with me, continue listening to it on the app while I get my coffee and things before work. Or if I have time for a walk, I take it with me then. It's really good. She breaks down each verse and made it applicable to our lives. If you've ever prayed and feel like God doesn't hear your prayers, or you're wondering what he's doing because, Lord, I prayed for this and you're doing the, what? That's not what I prayed for. She breaks it all down. And if you don't know, Habakkuk starts in the beginning of the book and he is wrestling with what's going on. And his people are not without sin, but then there's the Chaldeans who are really bad evil people, and he goes to the Lord in fear. By the end of it, he gets to faith. So the first few series of this weren't uplifting or happy, but they're necessary for you to understand all of it. And then some of the way through, it switches, and that's when I really felt like this hit home for me with Nancy's teachings. But the Lord puts the Chaldeans in charge, and Habakkuk is like, ah, oh, Lord, that wasn't what I was praying for, for them to be ruling over our people. They're awful. No, we may have sin, but look at their sin. Like, no, they shouldn't be ruling over us. And he gets to a place of faith where he's singing the Lord's praises and he doesn't necessarily understand still what the Lord is doing, but he has faith and he believes in the Lord and he understands that faith is not conditional. Faith isn't just when things are going our way. In fact, I would say even more so, faith is more about when things aren't going our way. It's a lot easier to have faith if you went, won a million dollars and everything in your life is perfect. When things aren't going well, when you lose your job, when you get a cancer diagnosis, when you get a divorce, those are the times when you really need your faith and it's easiest to question it. And Nancy brings all of this home and relates it all to our circumstances of everyday life. Really excellent series. I really enjoyed it. In fact, there was a couple of episodes that I listened to twice because they were that good. So I love Revive Our Hearts, but I really enjoyed that Habakkuk series. If that interests you at all, you can listen to it on your computer. You can listen to it on your phone. You can read it. I think they have a transcript of it on the computer. Very strongly recommend that. It was just so enjoyable for me. And then the final one is one I've been doing with my Christian ladies on this app called Voxer with a V, not a B. And it's Max Lucado's Traveling Light. It was really good. It centers around Psalm 23. He does a lot of analogies in every chapter. In fact, maybe a little too many in the beginning. He'd like have a sports analogy which I couldn't relate to. So then when he put in another analogy, that actually helped me. So maybe it's good he had quite a few analogies on each chapter. But he deals with the different burdens we have. He injects a lot of scripture, which I love, and he talks plainly about how we can handle things. So some of the burdens are having a lesser God, having self-reliance, discontent, weariness, Worry, hopelessness, guilt, arrogance. I'm going to put this all on the screen. The final chapter was about homesickness and how we should be living for heaven. How we all get trodden down at different times with different things. And it was very uplifting. Again, if you have any girlfriends you can do a discussion with. We did this book two chapters in the week, which was perfect for my work schedule and the other ladies that worked well with their schedule. And we would each get on whatever days worked, any two days, 
and talk about our thoughts on that chapter, what we really liked, what resonated, sometimes things from our own experience, and then we'd listen to the other ladies and what they said, and sometimes they would point out things that I had missed in the chapter, and I'm like, yeah, oh wow, I remember that, that was really good. And it didn't quite resonate the same way it did with them, so that helped me. It's just amazing to have Christian ladies to discuss things with, and I really enjoyed this book. It's the first Max Lucado book that I've read, and it won't be the last. I really, really enjoyed it. So those were my five books for the month of August. Let me know any that you have read or any that interest you from this. I hope maybe you picked up one or two that might interest you, and I hope you find a lot of time to read great books. Thank you so much for spending some of your day with me. I always appreciate it, and I hope you're having an amazing week. We'll talk to you next time.